Winning Plays Podcast is back, and the Celtics are up 1-0 in the NBA Finals. My name is Brian Robb, joined today by Brandon Jackson to break this all down. Make sure you're following him on Twitter, at Jack, S-O-B-D. Jax, we, we watched what I thought was honestly <clears throat> maybe the most entertaining Celtics game of the postseason in game one, and potentially the best, the defining quarter of their season as they bounce back from a 15 point second half deficit, go 40 to 16 in the fourth quarter Unreal. and just run away with game one with a 120, 108 win in something that I think had everyone's head spinning afterwards here. There's a lot of different ways to go in this game. I think we just have to start with the fourth quarter and what I, what I want to start, we'll get into the players in a second, but what are your thoughts like on just the email adjustments that he went into there? Because I feel like we saw a lot of different looks and variations there. And he just seemed like everything he touched kind of turned to gold in that spot. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you have a great post on this, uh, um, masslive.com. I read it this morning. So shout out to you. <laughs> Definitely check it out if you guys haven't read it yet. But uh, I think you hit the nail on the head with those. First, going small, one big, getting rid of the double big lineup. Uh, having Derek White out there. And then there's something that I noticed and talked about with Ryan Bernadoni during, you know, on Twitter during the game last night, keeping Pritchard in there, ballsy. I don't even know if I can say that on the pod, but ballsy. <laughs> like, you could say oh, that man. more on the pod. <laughs> exactly. It was crazy. Like, uh, you know, Ryan pointed out a good, po- had a good point when. Pritchard came, uh, Clay Thompson came around that screen and the, like a uh, sort of a corner three extended a little bit and Pritchard was trailing, but sort of recovered, but he's only six, one, whatever. And he got that, you know, Thompson got that clean look. I thought, uh, Ime is going to pull him. Smart's going to go back in. It was like five minutes left and I'm so happy he didn't, you know, it's like, it's like he stuck with him. Then he hit that big corner three and then, you know, to everyone noticed the dude defensive rebounds like yeah. <laughs> when everyone is like definitely focused on Kevon Looney and definitely focused on like any guards coming in he can kind of sneak in and gobble up those defensive rebounds he was just you know again I don't want to give him like too much credit but he was just awesome and so that was a huge adjustment from Ime that I'm so happy that he didn't overreact take him out put smart in he just he pulled the right levers in the fourth quarter and it showed yeah it's 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 so like, uh, like the, the the perfect like gut feel for that in terms of like smart wasn't having a bad game no like not he at just all. wasn't like he honestly was one of the guys who probably showed up the most in the first half and i mean there were all sorts of issues that we'll get into there early on but you know he was there were there was like 99 percent of the time you're going to see the coach go back to the reliable starter with eight minutes left in the the fourth quarter or six minutes left in the fourth quarter but he may just lean into okay like I really like how this guy is playing right now. I really like how the offense looks around him. He obviously wasn't he only had five points. It's not like he was like doing a ton of stuff, but just the, the spacing, the presence kind of going to the max shooting, you know, lineup, if you will, I feel like just open things up and, and the ball is popping 12 assist jacks I know. Uh, in the, in the fourth quarter, it was like, obviously the Warriors heads were spinning and, and the Pritchard was the kind of guy that just makes you pay if you're going to send the doubles at Tatum and Brown, which they continuously kept doing during that, during this run. Totally. And that's what teams kept who kept, I wouldn't say making a mistake because Tatum is that good, but in the second half of the season, when the Celtics went on that run, it was mostly because Tatum became a facilitator. They would send two and the Celtics were all too happy to, to move the ball. That's why in the last two series, Milwaukee, Miami, it was kind of scary. It devolved into a lot of hero ball, a lot of one-on-ones because they had the horses to guard Tatum one-on-one. They weren't worried about sending doubles necessarily all the time. And the Warriors don't seem to have that guy. I mean, Wiggins obviously did a really good job on Doncic. Tatum and Doncic are very different players. Tatum is so much more athletic. You can't put Wiggins on Tatum and, and just shut him down. His shooting percentage last night, notwithstanding. Right. <laughs> 17. But, uh, but yeah, it's just, it's, it was really, really great to watch, but I will say they were also hitting shots. Now 
they weren't as heavily contested as they were. They probably felt wide open based on the last two series and how closely guarded they were. But, um, you know, they were hitting those open shots and credit to them for sure. Yeah. So it's, you look at it, you're like, you're not sure. And we'll get into Draymond Green's comments in a bit, but like if when the Celtics make that counter to that smaller lineup, which I think obviously we saw it a bit in the first half, but you, you had the feeling that Ime was kind of keeping it in his back pocket here. And then obviously rolled it out at the beginning of the fourth quarter instead of waiting until crunch time. And my guess is as the series goes on, like it's going to be a bigger and bigger chunk of the game now that they're in this. I honestly could see it go both ways because if we, I know we're talking about the fourth quarter, but that, that first half, the first half of the first half defense, they were just so out of sorts. And like, you know, they would switch on Rob and Rob would, wouldn't press up far enough. Those are small adjustments that you can make with the double big. I think he's going to, I obviously I wouldn't be surprised, but do whatever works. Right. And obviously that small lineup worked, but they just love Rob in that dunker spot. And so if you can get, you know, him to just be a little bit further pushed further up and then they build a wall for Steph. They, they're going to try it again in game two for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, they'll, 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 they'll keep the starting five. It's a matter of like, yeah. are we just going to see it for just the, the first five or six minutes of each half and that's it. Or right. is it, like you said, is it, do they make the adjustments to it to counteract it so they can, you know, kind of hold their own on the floor. But I mean, I mean it's something, yeah. I mean, it's something that uh, Ryan and I talked about a little bit on, on the preview pod earlier this week of, of it's, it's just like a matchup situation in terms of like, okay, if you want to, if you want to have Rob guard, Andrew Wiggins, it's like, I don't think that's a good idea. Big picture wise, like in terms of like defensively and, and, and the, the type of shots they're getting. And when you take away that options from the Warriors in the half court, then it seems like options get a lot more limited for them in terms of what they can do. Yeah. And, and that's the thing Rob kept leaving because he's supposed to, he's sort of the freelancer, yeah. but they dared, will uh, they dared Wiggins to beat them and he beat them a bunch of times wide open threes. And I know he's not the shooter, you know, Steph and clay are, you will pick your poison that way, but I don't think you have to, I think if you, I think they over, I think he may overthought coverages. I think there were way too many, Okay, if Steph does this, if it's a one five, it's a three five, it's a you know pick and roll, if it's it's a, or rather one three, whatever, you know this is when we do this. And obviously there were so many miscommunications. Yeah. Steph had like three wide open threes, and and Clay had two, and it's just like, guys, you're overthinking it. Just go over the pick, switch hard, and then you know when when a guy like Kevon Looney dives hard to the rim like he's supposed to, or Draymond Green. You, you have to, the wings spread defenders have to recover and everyone just has to recover and you give up offensive rebounds that way, which was what we saw, but way better to give an offensive rebound. If you're contesting hard and, and not and conceding an open three or an open dunk, I, I will say one of Andre Godala's, uh dunks. It was like picture perfect warriors basketball. It was like, the, the Celtics hedged hard, they doubled, and then they gave it to Draymond Green, and then the, the weak side guy stepped up. Right, it's a two-on-one, and then it was over. Exactly, yeah. and it was beautiful if, if you're a Warriors fan, and, but I think the Celtics have the ability to counter that, and they've shown it all playoffs. They've shown it the whole second half of the season. They just need to get locked in. Like, that's it. <laughs> it so, I mean, that's done, like, we'll see what they do there moving forward in this series. Let's get back to the fourth quarter for a minute yeah. here, though, um, since there, I mean, we haven't even really talked about the players in the yet beyond Ime and, um, you know, going small. Yeah, I mean, you have to start with, with Jalen Brown Absolutely. in terms of um, who I honestly thought kind of brought it out of the gate in this game. Um, and then things went astray in like the middle two quarters there for a shot for a little bit, but he always like the way he played, you know, he seemed to like be the one guy that had it going, you know, out of the gate in terms of like his shot making, but what he did in that fourth quarter, just to start it to like clearly get the Warriors out of start sorts by just, you know, owning them in isolation situations and then perfectly saying, okay, you're going to throw those my way. I'm going to start passing the ball. And yeah. he led the team with five assists in the, in the fourth quarter. I just love, I just love how the long two is the worst shot in basketball, unless it's not, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like Jalen Brown. That was like, he just got cooking. He, and they were good contests. He like, you know what I mean? He would cut hard couple dribbles. The one um, this, I don't think this was in the fourth, but when he got, there were a couple times in the first half when he got too deep and got kind of swallowed yeah. up at the rim. And it was funny, like, Oh, the Wiggins block. Remember when Wiggins sure. just like absolutely sent it back to him. 
And it's like, if he had just pulled up where he's more comfortable, like free throw line extended, boom, he would have been fine. But I think he was just, you know, the, the more you get to the, r- the rim, the more it opens up. Why? So I get there are reasons why you take a contested, try to get to the rim. But man, he was so good. And he really set the tone. I mean, I, I know we're going to talk about Al Horford. I know we're going to talk about uh, Derek White hitting shots. I know we're going to talk about Marcus Smart, uh, you know, hit, making, I saw on Twitter, it was so smart. Uh, someone posted, uh, yeah, he made the shots that uh, he missed in Miami, those wide <laughs> open threes and game seven. And it was just like, it's so true. It's like, it's the difference between giving up a lead and extending a lead. And so anyway, right. but it all goes back to Jalen Brown. They were down. How do I, you know, Tatum is not hitting. Everyone's tired. I'm going to put this team on my back. I'm going to hit a bunch of shots. I'm going to be super aggressive. And then I'm going to dish when necessary. I just, I loved his fourth quarter. I just loved it. Yeah. 10 points, five assists, four or six shooting, two or three from three, two rebounds, just one turnover, one team turnover that quarter, which again was just as big as anything there. When you, when you put together a, an offensive quarter like that, which was the most points that the, not only was it the most points the Warriors gave up, in a postseason quarter this season, it was also the fewest points they scored. 16. Unreal. Literally, literally the literally <laughs> though the worst uh two-way quarter for them in the entire postseason. Um, all right. So Jalen was fantastic. And then I think we got like I think honestly, if you go next, I think you gotta go Derek White, who was in there for the entire quarter, who was, I think, fantastic this whole game. Um 21 points plus 25, which is a team high in 32 minutes. I mean, this is a perfect, we knew that going into this series is like, this is the perfect series for Derek white in terms of like seeing his value oh, yeah. against a team like this. But this is, you know, for as rough of a shooting night as he's had over the season, this was, I think regression to the mean, I mean, he made a couple of tough ones, but like a lot of them were just free flowing good looks. And he's obviously it's like a middle of the road, three point shooter, but he's shot like crap for much of the first of three or four months and got comfortable here. Yeah, it was weird. Like, so it, he looked total San Antonio Derek White. Yes. He looked like the guy that, you know, could put 30 up against us. And we're like, what the hell, you know? <laughs> and he just looked awesome. And and it was weird. At This morning, I was like, I, I should have done this a while ago. Maybe I did and I forgot. But like, I went to basketball reference and I was like, I never remember him being a minus shooter. Like, I don't remember him being Steph Curry, but like, I don't remember being, no, he was like mid to high thirties, his whole career. It's just this weird back, uh, you know, this weird back half of the season where he just, you know, I don't know if it was like the new team, you know, learning a new, whatever his wife was super pregnant. I mean, like there's so many reasons why he just, maybe just was a little off or whatever, but he seems to have found it in the back half of the Miami series in this game, certainly. And it's going to be huge. Not only his defense, his switchability, like, and his ability to get to the rim, his teardrops, his finish is just so nice. I love his touch around the rim. Oh my God. If he's, and he's wetting these shots, like they're not bouncing around or, you know, pinballing. No, he is wetting them. Like, Oh, it's, it's great. It's great. It's great to see. And that's probably on, honestly might not even be his most important value. Like from a defensive standpoint, he was, you know, you don't know. There are obviously you, like you talked about, there are plenty of defensive miscues in the first half. And he was a part of some of those whose fault it is in those scenarios. Like we're, we're never going to know in full when there's, you know, two guys go on the handoff of someone in the basket. You know who I say it is. Right. I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's Emay's fault every time. Right. So yeah, that, it, it, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it, whether things need to be simplified to avoid those scenarios. Like that's, I think going to be a, a, a discussion in the coach's room uh, in these next two days. Um, but wait, you know, when you go small with the lineup and you say, Hey guys, just like hold up against your men, hold up against Steph Curry, hold up against Clay Thompson. Wait, did that did that Absolutely. perfectly in the second half. And, um, and to, to get that on top with the 21 points is like, again, like giving up, this is why this is like the, the perfect definition of a win now trade for this team and totally. worth every penny. Win now and later he's signed. Yeah, right. And he like signed for the next four years, like, three, three more years, <laughs> three more years. And he's, a, he's, he'll never be a minus player, right. Yeah. On this deal, he's 27 years old. Like he'll never like, so he, even if the Celtics, like, I don't know, Al Horford retires or whatever, Rob Williams is injured. You got to find, you know, you're never going to be mad that you have Derek white on a good deal. 
it just yeah. won't. Obviously, you need smart insurance. He'll never play 82 games, like, and that's fine. But like, it, oh, it's just it was so smart by Brad. Do I I wondered again earlier this week, like if they they won't they won't change anything now, but if, if White ultimately finds himself just like starting in the series. Yeah. Because I thought Ryan, I listened time. to the I listened to your last pod and I thought Ryan was like too bullish on on the idea that if the Celtics adjust, it's a, it's because the Warriors are dominating. I'm like, I don't know, man. I mean, things this might like, be their best lineups. It's just their yeah, best lineup. And, like, it, yeah, exactly. And like, you're going to push pull a million different things early in a series and see what works. And then late you're going to tweak. And it's like, I have confidence in Derek white and I have confidence in a healthy Rob Williams. So like, you know, I think you're, you kind of have an embarrassment of riches. So if everyone's playing up to their potential, right. Yeah. We, we saw against Milwaukee and Miami, some, some bad offensive play, but I gotta be honest. And I said this a couple of times last night on Twitter, like, like this golden state team is a solid defensive team. And they obviously have the pedigree of being a very good defensive team in their past years. They are not what they were. And they're no. not Miami and Milwaukee. No, this not is, close. We are, they are seeing why the, the, the basket must look like they're playing in an empty gym right now. And they'll sort of get used to, you know, they'll cut, fall back down to earth a little bit and they'll get used to like, you know, their defense and maybe picking different plays, things like that. But like, man, they didn't, they must, I'm sure they're like, I could play tomorrow because they're just not as beat up as they were in Miami and Milwaukee. They're battle tested. It's, it's just a, per, the, Game one was such a perfect storm of the Miami and Milwaukee really preparing them to weather a run from Golden State, which, as you know, I texted you, it's over. When they went up 10 in the third, I was like, it's over. There's no chance. Like, you know, everyone's getting, they're just going to get cooked. They're just going to, like, the shooters are going to get cooking and the Celtics are going to try, but they just don't have the offense. Well, they have the offense if they're not being as guarded as closely. Like, that's what we found out in the fourth. So, Man, it was just, it's just going to be a different series. And I got to really recalibrate how I watch this stuff. And to your point on the defense, it's like, yeah, there are some, you know, Draymond's Draymond. Like mm-hmm. Looney obviously had a hell of a game and is, was a, had three blocks, was a nice force down low there. Um, but, you know, Curry and t- like Thompson is just not close to the defender he was early in his career before these not injuries. A little, yeah. And, and Curry is Curry. Like Curry will like put the work in, but he's still like, you know, not, anyone you can be free of and certainly someone that Tatum and Brown can can pick on if they get matched up there and then like you said like Otto Porter off the bench like Iguodala is very very old now and is still useful but he's certainly not going to give you the pounding that you got from Miami and in Milwaukee so it's it's for me like yeah it's they're not going to change anything starting wise obviously after this win but I wonder now if they lose game two and it's another tough night for the Dole Bigs. I wonder if you just go there now. Like you just, right. you make Faye, we're just, we're, we're not going to like fool around here. Like we're going to go small out of the gate. We're going to play these guys 35 minutes a night anyway. So why, you know, waste the opening six minutes of the game letting Steph or Clay get hot. Um, but who knows? Maybe they won't need to go there. Maybe they but, like, like play well enough where that, that just isn't a, uh, an option they need to do to, to mess with. Totally. Cause the Celtics were beating themselves in the first quarter. Like yeah. just the, again, you can't leave Steph wide open. And I don't, I, I know I said, I'm always going to blame Ime, but that's not to say that Ime is not an excellent coach. He is freaking awesome. Okay. I, you know, it, but like when a, when a team, a team collectively continues to leave the best shooter ever wide open that's either a problem with strategy going under the pick, which you can't do, or a problem with communication where you're telling, you know, the guys like, you know, your the starters know, but then Derek white comes in and he's confused or Rob's confused. Cause he's the five, you know, or it's, it's, um, it's just uh, hard against the Warriors. It's hard to do that stuff against the, like the way they run the offense. Totally. But it's, or it's preparation. Right. And those are all email things like email, email, like, so, and I just think in game two, that's that stuff's going to be completely cleaned up. You know, there's Steph's still going to, he could still go off being covered. That's, you know, in the late, in the second half, he was getting wide open shots just from juking people just from breaking ankles. So he's able to do whatever he wants 
pretty much whenever he wants. So like, you don't need to give them the wide open one. So I think they're going to clean that up for game two, which is, which is why I think that they're, they're not necessarily giving away the first six minutes by going double big. Um, but you're right. I mean, if they, if it continues to happen, even if they don't mess up the coverages or Rob is good, locked in, whatever, you know, they still could lose that first quarter just because the Warriors are that good offensively. Right. And so, I mean, that, that, like we said, we'll see, we'll see how they clean things up with that group in game two and then that will probably think, tell us a lot in terms of what direction they go in for the rest of the series here mm. uh we haven't talked about al horford yet um Travesty. we're con- contractually obligated to do so <laughs> he's now up to 46 percent from three in the postseason um he kind of like the shot disappeared from him for a couple games at the end of that miami series which was like totally expected slash you know tired legs, guys like tired legs 40 minutes a <laughs> night like been shooting the lights out for a while but again the the lack of respect the Warriors gave him for a lot of these looks in this series like Draymond not even coming out of the paint for a couple of them to start the game um and he, I don't know I mean he, nine of 12 uh we know this the shots he hit in the in the third quarter I mean the fourth quarter coming in well rested after Rob <clears throat> mm-hmm. man the ship there to start it but <clears throat> from from what Al did here it's like okay yeah he had a really good game like this is kind of this, this has kind of been the story of his postseason Absolutely. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is what we've seen the last two series is like, you know, he's had one supernova game and then he's been super quiet the rest of the series. So I wonder, is this a supernova game or is this kind of like a factor of the fourth quarter? Like, cause up until the fourth quarter, he had a solid game, but it wasn't like, yeah, it was like, wasn't sticking out off the page or something like that. Exactly. And then he just, he just stopped losing offensive rebounds to Looney he yeah. stopped like he hit like two or three threes like just unreal so i hope this isn't a supernova game but if it is uh i still i still think the celtics are in a really good spot i mean anytime you steal game one you're in a great spot so i mean you stole game one and, and tatum went three of 17 i know like exactly. that's the thing like oh yeah like can this no this is like if this is a supernova game, that's like that's amazing timing for for this because... and not just stole it because they they blew them out yeah right you know? i mean they, they, they right if the if the game was another five minutes, they would have won by like 20. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah, like it is, you, 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 you hope that with the, again, depending on how the Warriors play this, like those looks are going to continuously be there for him in this series. Like, yeah, maybe it won't be like they'll start contesting, but if, if they contest too hard, then they're giving away other stuff. And then absolutely again, the Celtics is just a reminder here that, yeah, the Celtics had the best offense in the NBA in the second half of the season. And we didn't see a lot of that in the slog in the football games that were like the heat in the buck series. Um, That's, this is not going to be that type of series. Um, It doesn't seem like, and maybe the warriors really try to muck it up and they try to do that, but I don't, you know, I don't know if they have the, the dogs to do that as well as they got one guy who I think is, is not going to play. It's Gary Payton, like Gary Payton jr. Like, Awesome. You know, bulldog, yeah. get in your face, make everything hard for you. He broke his elbow like three weeks ago. <laughs> like, like, come on, man. Like he obviously I love that he was getting ready. No brace, no cast. Obviously, he's tough as hell. He's just a guy you you would love to have. But you know, I think it's a smoke screen. I don't think if he's gonna play, I think it's like Tyler Hero last last you know Game last seven. series just a shell of himself so yeah. if, if they really well, the Warriors, they won't have to guard him on offense like that's true. that's that, that's the, that's a trade-off true but in transition you do because that yeah I mean, and here's the thing that about the warriors and why the celtics were able to pull away so easily like the a missed shot against the warriors is like a losing proposition they're so good even that leak out by clay thompson you know draymond just threw it up to him and he got that dunk at the end and i know it was meaningless but like that can't happen in game two game three you we got the celtics have to continue to hit a high percentage of their shots or else they're going to give up those easy transition points and gary payton is a guy who could definitely get out in transition yeah i mean well certainly i i'd be shocked if we don't see him in game two just to see what he has um to, sure but but uh, i think it, it's I, it's a broken elbow <laughs> i know I, I agree it's a pretty miraculous turnaround like like a month out to be back um but i mean again we'll, we'll like time will tell what actually that looks yep. like there 
who did we miss here? We, we, we covered pretty much everyone. We haven't talked about Tatum at all. Um, 12 points, 13 assists, five rebounds, 317 night. I'll credit Tatum a lot for this. Um, he was happy, very, very happy to play the facilitator role in the fourth quarter. And oh that, God. and that hasn't yep. always been the case. This, I know. Been a, this is certainly, we've seen many movies where, which when he's had just a, a real rough night where three of 17 ends up being five of 25 and like hurts a little too much this fourth quarter he was happy to hand the keys over to Jalen and then happy just to to move the ball even in transition some really great like looking for the trailer for Horford on a couple of those threes and so that stuff I mean whatever the, the shooting night's the shooting night like you know he just didn't have it but that stuff is like you go back in the film and you were like wow this is this is a really promising sign and his body language, and I think body language is like a little over overblown, but like he was not upset. He wasn't arguing with the refs. He wasn't upset. Yeah, I don't remember one of those. I don't remember like one, like him upset the ref, like, like at least like freak out or anything. Well, I think part of the reason is they let him play last night. Like yeah. the refs were perfect last night. Yeah. I had very little issue. I think, I think, you know, Steph got one gift call that I remember, you know, yeah. and I think, I think probably Tatum probably got a gift call too. So like it all kind of balances out. But like, um, going it was back a clean to, game. Yeah, it was a clean game. They they're roughly the same free throws, you know. And then um, Tatum being a facilitator, like I remember they asked him post game. Someone asked him post game first question, like three for seventeen. How are you feeling? And he goes ecstatic. Like we just came in and won <laughs> by twelve <laughs> against the Golden State Warriors in their building in the NBA Finals, man. Like because he also knows he's. I feel like this is his feel out game, man. He I, I think he's gonna go off in game two or game three like he had like four wide open threes that he inexplicably bricked airballed one bad like it's not happening dude if he gets open shots he's going off next yeah. game it's you certainly they're gonna see those looks and be happy about that um two days off until game two what are you expecting we already kind of we talked adjustments from the Celtics there just cleaning up I think is is first and foremost what we're expecting I don't think we're going to see anything else beyond maybe more of this small lineup and, and bigger doses here for one what if you're Ime Adoka, what are you expecting from the Warriors in game two Jax and like what how do you kind of prepare for, for that in terms of like counters they could try to mess with you here yeah I think we're I think the Warriors are going to play harder a especially in the second half I think they're going to sh- – Clay Thompson's going to shoot a little bit better. They're going to try to get him going a little bit. I mean, last series he had like a 30-point game, and he was like unconscious. Um, other than that, though, I don't really know how much they have. Like they got they got a ton of open looks from their role players. Wiggins shot wide open looks. Porter, we talked about Porter Jr. and, and uh, Andre Iguodala. I don't really know what other levers they can pull other than – telling Jordan Poole to kind of calm down. Yeah, right. I mean, honestly, pulling him a lot, he was bad. He was like, he was bad. He man. hurt them a lot. He looks slow too. All he was, and maybe the, the Celtics. He's a bad defender. Just, he's, and he, like, it he's was a bad, bad defender, defender for sure. But he's so quick on offense. Like I, I watched the other series and I was like, wow, who's going to match up with them? And I think the Celtics are just that much better defensively that they're not really worried about. I mean, he had a couple nice, like he had a beautiful floater where I was like, oh my God, this kid can score. But like, other than that, like at some point you, he's either going to have to figure it out in the defensive end, figure out like how to play team game or he's Jordan Clarkson, which no shade to Jordan Clarkson. Sometimes you need like, you know, a flip Murray off the bench, instant offense, but like, you know, he, he, you're not going to rely on that to win you an NBA finals. Right. Well, you, you just get exposed enough in other parts of your game where mm-hmm. that that's just not enough. Um, yeah, but you're right. I mean, like the, the rest of their bench played well, like Porter, Iguodala shot well. Um, they obviously didn't go deep beyond that. I don't expect them much to, unless Peyton, like he's, what we talked about, comes into the play here. I could and, see B Elitza a little bit. I mean, I'm kind of shocked he didn't play. Why do you think defense? Just defense? yeah, I think it's just defense. And you're right. I mean, like we'll see. And I, I get like they shot 42 percent from three. Right. So it's so like <laughs> they don't need him. <laughs> right. So it's like, and then Looney. I mean, you know, he four points, but he was a monster on the offensive glass, and that's clearly something the Celtics are going to have to you know, try to figure how to shore that up better. Cause that's going to keep burning them all series long between him and, and Draymond and, and other guys just, you know, really pounding that class in the first three quarters that um, the Celtics were able to clean up late, but you're right. I mean, it's, it's, it's a situation there where I'm not sure like 
they have levers to pull. I'm just not sure they're they're going to solve any problems. Yeah. Um, if they're solving again, and the Celtics could start shooting shitty or like training the ball over a bunch, and then that solves a lot of problems. Which yeah. are the Warriors. Draymond's going to shoot a little better too. I, I watched all of his field goal attempts before the pod. And a lot of them were just misses like uh, sort of around the pain extended and he like little teardrops. Yeah. He makes those, you know, like he just, he blew a couple layups. I think, I don't know what it is. He's not going to make a jumper. Like he maybe he was over five, uh, you know, from three, he might go one for five in a game, but like, and he's got to be wide open, but he missed like four wide open shots. And it's just like, dude, Oh, you got to be able to, you got to be a threat at least a tiny bit. And he's not. Um, so he's going to play a little bit better. I think that, like I said, that I mentioned that play earlier where doubled Steph threw it to Draymond, you know, Draymond just did a nice little high right. low dump off to Iggy. We're going to see more of that. Like, but I think the Celtics, they have the horses to counter. They just have the horses to counter. So, you know, Steve Kerr is a lot smarter than I am. Draymond Green is sure as shit a lot smarter than I am at basketball. So they're going to figure it out. They're going to be, they're going to play better, but I had Celtics in six, from the beginning because I thought, you know, you could have a supernova game from one or all of their stars and then you could have a slug fest, but like, I'm feeling real confident about that prediction. Like after game one, <laughs> I'm excited to see what game two has, but I, I just, I don't see how they counter. I, I'm like game two, Rob played 24 minutes. I don't think he needs to play a single more minute no al horford like little little under 33 like this is great two days off like uh, like this is all playing out celtics favor right now it's just it's it's exciting <laughs> all right well we're gonna have it's gonna be a whole lot of pressure on golden state on sunday night celtics looking for the early knockout punch um and you know we'll see again how about like we know the warriors are gonna come out with the urgency, we'll see if the Celtics have been, are able to match that level or if they're, you know, play like they're happy that they just got one out there, which, you know, there's nothing to, nothing to be uh, sad about there, but obviously you would change, you know, if we have a, if another close one on our hands here, then that's going to be uh, something else. Well, well, I'll say one more thing that I forgot to say earlier. The, the other first games that the Celtics lost, they just got blown out. They sort of got blitzed. They sort of, I wouldn't say they weren't ready, but they were, you know, there was stuff that they weren't prepared for. They were absolutely prepared for this game. They were ready and they were down big to a very talented offensive team. And they came back and won big, like yeah. that's totally different from any other game they played. So I think this is just a much different series. And it's just like I, the other Celtics against Miami and Milwaukee wouldn't have come back from that. And they're coming. back. Well, I mean, the heat pretty much did what the Warriors did in game three. Uh, I mean, I mean, the third quarter of game one, and then the Celtics just didn't have the, like I said, they didn't have the counterpunch that time. Um, they couldn't get stops in that game. Yep. This game, they got stops and um, the offense obviously was there too. So, all right, that's it for us for now. We'll, uh, we'll be back again for later this weekend with game two reaction. Make sure you're following Brendan Jackson on Twitter at Jack S O B D. Um, and I'll be posting stuff on mass live all weekend long. So check out there make sure you rate review subscribe to the wing place pod really appreciate you guys listening a bunch throughout this postseason run we'll be back at it with you guys and be back talking to brian b jackson the rest of the crew and the after these upcoming games here 